So, Michael Hearn's natty, huh? You know what? Dude, fuck you. Fuck all of you. I saw the comments and all of a sudden, I'm the asshole because I made a joke about Mike O'Hearn being an alien. We're fucking getting into it, dude. So apparently, people can't take a fucking joke, number one. And number two, this was supposed to be a fun Natty or Not. Like, I don't know any of these fucking people personally, except a few of them, like Mike, like Greg, and that's immediately where people went, like Mike O'Hearn. Like, how did, maybe I'm not that funny. Am I not that funny? Or maybe you suck at editing, you fucking asshole. But people were like, oh, you think Mike O'Hearn's natty? Literally just got done saying that Alex Eubank possibly took something. David Laid, who are like 165 pounds. Like right now, Alex is doing a series. I just started looking into these fucking assholes because of you dickheads in the comments. On the road to 200 fucking pounds. And then you have Mike O'Hearn. Listen, the thing that I was referencing about Mike O'Hearn being an alien and possibly natty as a fucking joke was the fact that he is unnatural. Mike is a sweet guy. He's a very nice guy. And whenever I was telling the story about how he had met Bob, how does someone who is at Mike's status for as long as he has been so kind to me and the people that are extensions like Bob and Shane and other employees here at the company that have met him and then somehow Mike remembers exactly who they are, their name, and their fucking dogs. And the things that Mike has done with his with the service dogs and all the fucking how polite and sweethearted the man is. Do I think he's natty? No. But he is not from this earth, meaning as a joke, because he is nice, kind, uh, wonderful with animals, remembers people. Like, how can you remember like Bob after seeing him one time and then remembering everything about him? That's not normal. It was a joke. It's fun. This was supposed to be a lighthearted video, and now you fucking assholes have turned me into this fucking cocksucker. And then again, when it's Mike, yes. Do I think he's natty? No. Do I think that he has built his entire career off of being natty? Yes. So he's gonna fucking die on that fucking hill. And whether he's natty or not, who gives a flying fuck? What bearing does that have on my life? Like, Mike has no fucking bearing on my life. I just know that the man has been nothing but kind to me and kind to my employees and p my business partners. How do you remember somebody's dog's name after meeting them fucking one time? That's not normal. But apparently you fucking assholes, somebody in the comments said like, whenever I said exactly what I just said in the comments, somebody was like, well, it's just a touchy subject because Mike keeps saying that he's natural. Well, it, it, so you can't take a fucking joke. You can't take something that was a lighthearted video. Because in the very beginning of the video, I said, I'm not going to fucking go and bash people. Mike's a great guy. Love Mike. Did he get work done? Yes. Is he probably taking something? Tay have taken things? Does take things at times? Probably, but I don't really give a flying fuck because it has no bearing on my life. I like Mike as a person because of how he has fucking treated me and the people that work with me. Then, Greg Doucette. Now, Greg, I don't think, has too much of a soul left. He might have a couple pieces left, but the dude does not give a flying fuck. He'll make a video about anything under the fucking sun. The dude has made over half a dozen videos on me, and guess what? I'm still here. It has no fucking bearing on my life. If you think I'm being a kiss-ass to Greg so he doesn't make another fucking video about me, I'm not done on the internet, and neither is Greg, so I can guarantee you there's probably gonna be another half dozen fucking videos from Greg about me doing something that I've done at some point in time. There is no fucking way Greg Doucette is taking Trendolin. How can you make this claim, Seth? Well, Greg is a cyclist. He fucking loves cycling. If you've ever seen his output whenever he posts it every now and then, or Bob, since Bob is an Iron Man and Bob does some really wild shit, he has seen Greg do his races and he's like, that motherfucker has some output. And I'm like, really, Bob? That's nuts. How strong is he? He's like, dude, he is a fucking animal. The dude comes on so strong at the end of his races, it's ungodly. So with that knowledge and the knowledge base that I have about taking a fuckload of trend or a little bit of trend or taking trend at all, there is no way someone can have that amount of aerobic output by taking trend blend. No, no good crossfitter, no fucking cyclist, no trail runners, no iron men, no fucking cyclists, none of them take fucking trend blend. Why? It inhibits your aerobic output. So how the fuck is he taking it? Is he taking other things? I don't fucking know. Maybe. I said he's on TRT, but all of a sudden, did I say he's fucking natty in the video? Fuck no. No. So I didn't, so I mean, uh, that's where I'm like, he's on TRT, he's not fucking natty. <laughs> no. <laughs> With Greg, I would say that he has an advantage of knowing every little bit about his body possible. Whenever it comes to manipulating his diet a little bit, it's gonna change how he looks. Whenever he goes to manipulating his training, change how he looks. He knows his body better than some of you know your own dick. I've been training for 26 fucking years. 
26 fucking years. So therefore, I know my body pretty well. I can make adjustments to my programming and notice if, if it was a good idea or how it has changed my body very quickly because that's part of it. Like I said, I've, I've been training longer than some of you motherfuckers have been alive. And that's the advantage as you get older. And some of you youngins or some people that have been training for a few years, maybe if you stick with it for this fucking long, you will realize that the shit you said has your head right up your fucking asses. Because if you train for 15 years, 20 years, or have taken fucking steroids for 15 fucking years, you're going to learn a whole lot about them and how it has affected you personally because it affects everyone a little bit differently. Otherwise, if it affected everybody the exact same, it would have the exact same effect on everybody, which it fucking doesn't. And that's what makes this whole thing fun. Shizzy is a genetic freak. For fucking sure, he's a genetic freak. I don't care how much fucking gear you have pumping through your body to look like he does. It's pretty impressive. So do I think he's on something? Potentially, yes. Do I think he's a genetic freak? abso fucking lootly. Like his brother. His brother's jammed as fuck, too. His mom probably has fucking massive arms. His dad probably has splits in his fucking calves. Genetics play into how you respond to training, nutrition, and steroids. That's just how it works. How do I know this? Because I did all of it for a long period of time. Am I genetically gifted? Sure, absolutely. But if I just relied on my genetics and not on my base of training, my base of nutrition, how I've responded to steroids and my knowledge of them, I wouldn't be where I am. Shizzy, yeah, he's probably taking something. But do I really give a fuck about any of these guys? Absolutely fucking not. It was supposed to be a fun fucking video. Now I have to make the not so nice natty or not or whatever the fuck we're calling this. They just want to hear people tear people down. And that's what kind of fucking irritates me about this because that means that there are so many people that get such sick enjoyment out of ripping people down rather than being like, man, he looks great. But I also understand that these people are claiming that they're natty. Like, dude, if you're sitting there claiming that you're fucking natural and you're not, you're the one that has to look at yourself in the mirror every night and know that you're living a fucking lie. That's why I live and speak and do the things that I do because I know for a fact that if you lie, you're gonna get caught in it at some point. I've lied, I've cheated, I've stole. I've done everything wrong just about under the sun. I've tested the limits whenever the limits should not have been tested. I broke the rules when you shouldn't have fucking broke them. That's why I give the advice that I do, simply because <laughs> I'm trying to help shorten your learning curve. So with me and looking at these young men in their lives, it's almost like they've dug themselves into such a fucking hole that they don't know how to be themselves. They have dug themselves into the natty hole where they will never be able to climb out of it because they have said over and over that they're natural. When I said, like I said, what happens if they're not natural? They're the ones that are looking at themselves in the mirror saying, fuck, I'm living a little bit of a lie. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal. Or if you do do those, expect consequences to occur. But these young men have convinced themselves that they have to stay in the natty realm. They can't ever get out of it because then they are going to lose everything that they've ever worked for. They are absolutely fucking death-defying afraid, the ones that aren't natural, that are claiming natural, that if they ever come out, everything that they have, the millions of fucking dollars that they make, the fucking millions of followers, everything, all the code uses, all of everything will disappear because everybody will lose respect for them if they claim not natural. Or if they hop on, let's say they open up and say, yeah, you know what? I decide I'm going to do a fucking six week, uh, a six week cycle of Anivar. Therefore, if they say that, if they come out and say that, they now will never, ever, ever be able to claim Natty. However, if I just take a little bit here and a little bit there and do some light dosing of it, I could still claim natural and no one will see the difference of the, the gains that I make. They'll, they'll, they'll be able to believe that the gains that I'm making are natural. Jesse James West, I think that he actually might be one of the only ones that is 100% natural just because I think the dude's kind of a dork. I think he's the dude that just loves lifting weights, loves working out, loves making YouTube videos. I think that he likes making YouTube videos and lifting more than he likes being with women. Um, but again, that was a fucking joke. And I don't know if you cocksuckers can fucking get a joke or maybe you can edit it so people laugh and make like a, a fake audience like in the old 80s sitcoms. Yeah, we'll they taking it currently? They've taken it. Okay. What did I say about them? You said it more than likely they like, probably didn't. They probably haven't. 
They probably haven't. Oh, so they said that they did take it. I have no idea. I think it was later after the fact. They're like, yeah, we've taken trend. Uh, okay. Are we on trend? The answer is no. But have we taken trend? Yes. For a short period. For it wasn't less than a month. You literally develop schizophrenia on this shit. It's literally like schizophrenia in a bottle. You um, become a narcissistic cunt. Oh my destroying God. Friendships and relationships left and right. More muscle appears, more relationships no. and friends disappear. So, I mean, yeah, I don't follow them close enough to actually know. I don't watch every single one of their videos. I mean, from the way they look to me, I would have guessed that they didn't take Trent at any point because whenever, yeah, they're still light. They're still, they're still young. They still got that baby fat and that soft tissue to them. So, I mean. Yeah, I don't think they're lying about. Like, no, they have no reason to lie. They have no, no reason to lie. However, I just, from my assumption, from a quick first look at them, I wouldn't think that they have taken trend. So I'm an asshole for being wrong, apparently. Lex <laughs> Little, he's done, apparently he's done a tested power. Who's lead. that one? Is that the dude the with the big legs? Quads, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, he, again, he does look like he has a natural upper body. His, his legs are fucking stupid. But did he, so he took a, he did a drug tested meat? Yeah. That's great. Well, again, I'm wrong about that one. Yeah. But again, I just wanted to have fun. Like, I don't even, Lex Little's just, to me, in my head, he's the young dude with legs as strong as fuck. So, like I was saying about these people, these youngins that are, that are claiming natural that potentially couldn't be, uh, especially with how much money some of these young guys are making. Like, they have dug themselves into this natural hole, and to come out might be a little scary, because look at the back. I'm just sitting here, you're, you were handing me a phone. You were handing me like, hey, what do you think of this guy? I'm like, oh, I've seen him on TikTok. I don't fucking follow their videos. I don't know them intently, just on first look of everything. So with Lex Little, I mean, good. I'm glad that he's, that, I'm, I mean, I'm glad I'm wrong then. I mean, he's a young guy. What was he, 19? 22. Okay, 21, 22. Okay, so he's, he's about there. Um, but I mean, I'm glad that he's natural. Prove me wrong. The thing in this, this whole scenario about you guys and me and these natty or nots, it's supposed to, I wanted to make a fun video. Um, like I said, I didn't know all of the people on there, but uh, look at Keon, Keon Pearson. He turned pro naturally, okay? And everybody's like, this fucking kid's on gear. There's no way he's not. And I'm like, man, that dude's a wild looking motherfucker. There's no way he's natural. And I'm like, I don't know, there are some genetic freaks out there. There are genetic freaks. Kai Green, Ronnie Coleman, like they don't come across very often, but there are genetic freaks. Look at some fucking D1 athletes, like the, the one kid, the linebacker that just committed to fucking uh, Clemson. He's a linebacker, he's a fucking freak. He was squatting like four, 545 for a set of three or four. Stupid, he's an animal, he's 18 fucking years old. That's a strong motherfucker. And they test those sons of bitches. Is there ways to get around a drug test? Absolutely. However, if you take them at a young age, it's going to have an adverse effect on you. If you are a performance athlete, such as a football player, then you won't have anywhere to go. Diff completely different story. Then, Keon hopped on gear and everybody's like, so I think that we were wrong. I think we were all wrong. And now he's on, he definitely wasn't taking steroids. He wasn't. He is now taking steroids. And then all of a sudden he got on a fucking big time cycle and everybody's like, Hey, Keon's fucking legit. That dude is a fucking freak. The dude's only been taking gear for a couple years, two or three years. It's fucking unbelievable. So the only way for some of us to be proved wrong is for them to hop on gear and be like, and everybody be like, oh, yeah, they definitely were natural back then. Like if Shizzy, for example, say, let's say that Shizzy is natural, that he does not take anything, okay? And then he hops on some shit. And then everybody's like, my God, look at the size of this man. He gained 20 fucking pounds in eight weeks. Yeah, he was definitely natural back then. Remember whenever I said he wasn't natural? Um, I was fucking wrong. I'm the asshole. This son of a bitch is huge. But again, what fucking bearing does that have on anybody's life? Sure, these videos are fun. Sure, they're enjoyable. But it doesn't have any bearing on me if someone is natural or not. I saw in the comments, uh, I stopped getting into the comments after so long because I had to move on with my life. But there was one last, there was one last thing I want to talk about. Um, dude that was like, there was way more people talking about steroids before you. I'm like, okay, fuck stick, then you definitely don't know who I am. Rich Piano was one of the first very popular people to go wild with it on YouTube, okay? Uh, Tom Platts was one, was one of the first IFBB pros to publicly start talking about steroids. Boston Lloyd 
was, he talked about it a lot, but he was not popular and he was not giving good advice. Boston Lloyd was fucking three quarters of a psychopath. And he lived on that edge, but he was not an IFBB pro. I was one of the first IFBB pros to publicly come out about all of this stuff on YouTube. How do I know this? Okay, because in 2016, not many IFBB pros, if any, not popular ones, were talking about steroids. That is the, the steroids, drugs, and life video is literally what put me on the fucking map on YouTube. It is literally what built my entire YouTube channel was be, being one of the first people to start talking about this and being public because whenever that video went up, within 24 hours, I was getting phone calls from a lot of people in the industry saying, take that fucking video down, Seth. It was a little too much. And I was like, ooh. So I struck a chord with people. Um, can you guess what I said? Another, I'll give you one guess. Yes, I said, fuck you, I'm leaving it up. Because that is what I believed in. I was gonna be open, I was gonna be honest and feeling. And if you haven't watched it, link the video, Aiden. Steroids, Drugs, and Life, part one. It's fucking irate, it's funny as fuck, but I went off the handlebars about it, and I've been saying the same shit over and over. This is a personal decision. I said at the end of it that young men shouldn't take steroids. These teenagers shouldn't be taking steroids. You should learn about work. You should learn about fucking um, nutrition. The foundations of weightlifting and training and bodybuilding or powerlifting or strongman. Get the foundations of it all so that you have a fucking strong mental foundation about what you need to do to make sure that if you do like this and this is something you wanna do, whenever you get to the next level of taking gear, it's gonna have an effect on your head mentally because now you are gonna fall in love with the fucking gym. And I posted that on Instagram, that clip that you, you edited up there. And then I had some dickhead in the comments say, how about just don't take steroids at all? How about just don't take them at all? Oh man, what a fucking profound idea. Don't take drugs. Don't do drugs. How has that fucking phrase worked out for us in our society? A lot of fucking people are drug, drug addicts. We have a fucking epidemic of drugs in our entire country because no one's actually giving the education of taking drugs, like cocaine, uh, fucking amphetamines, all that shit. Nobody's actually educating anybody. They're just saying don't do them. Just like people are saying don't do steroids. Like, okay, great. But whenever you are these young men's ages, okay, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, what do you fucking think you are? Invincible. You believe that you're invincible. I'm fucking untouchable. Whenever you were 18 years old, you wanted to fucking push the limits and be an absolute fucking animal. You loved it. You just constantly think, I can fucking do anything. I am capable. And that's a great mentality because that gets you to the next level. However, you start to push the fucking limits. You're pushing the limits. And whenever we are pushing the limits in the one fucking place that we love more than anything on the fucking planet, in the gym, that's whenever steroids start popping into your head. Any fucking kid that's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 years old that has been in the gym for a number of years that has not thought about taking steroids is full of fucking shit. We all have, it's just a matter of whether we decide to do it or not. That personal choice that I talk about. So whenever we say, don't do drugs, Steven, you should not fucking do them. Okay, cool, but fuck you, dad, fuck you. I think I wanna do some shit just because I wanna experience life and where it gets dangerous is now, this is the part that I'm telling you, the educational part of it. If you love the gym more than anywhere else on the fucking planet, and then you go and take something like steroids, it is going to enhance the gym experience. You're gonna fucking like it a lot because it's gonna make you perform better in the one place that you love more than anything on the fucking planet. That's what makes it dangerous. And you thinking that you're invincible makes it even more dangerous because now you think that if you got this effect from this and then you read that this and this compounded together makes you even better, you're like, yeah, I like that shit. Let's do it. And then you start disregarding everything else in life. That, that just, you're just, now you're starting to go down a little bit of a dangerous fucking slippery slide there, dude. Because if you don't have guidance or you aren't paying attention to what you're doing, you are going to continually dig yourself in further and further into a hole that you might not be able to climb out of because you don't have a strong enough fucking mental foundation to understand that this shit will fuck you up in more ways than one. Not just physically, it might be mentally, it might be emotionally. You might start to question everything or you might lose your fucking shit one day and things go absolutely awry for you because you can't handle it mentally.
That is what makes us dangerous. Because just like drugs, you know how I like saying, don't do drugs. Okay, great. Wonderful fucking story, Seth. You shouldn't do cocaine. My parents said, Seth, don't do drugs. I'm like, okay, cool. Nice, nice. Why? Because they're bad. This is your brain on drugs, the fried egg. I'm like, cool. All right, nice. But then, whenever you go away to college, and you're on your own, you're 19 years old, you're partying, and uh, you see cocaine at a party for the first time. And you're like, oh, there's the cocaine. I heard about not doing this, I heard it's bad. And then you see the broad that you're like, man, that chick is fucking hot, check her out, big titties, nice, like, yeah. And people are doing cocaine and they're drinking, and then you get offered the cocaine, you're like, no, I don't do drugs. And then all of a sudden, cool, your friends come around and they do a couple bumps and you're like, man, I don't know, everybody seems to be having a pretty good time and like, I'm having a really good time and maybe I should just try it once. I could try it once, I could try it once. And then you try it once and then have a fucking wild time at this party. You end up getting with the girl and everything was great and it's a fucking memorable night and you're like, man, this is fucking awesome. I had so much fun. <clears throat> and before you know it, six months later, instead of just doing a bump at a party trying to get with the girl and have fun and enjoy yourself, you are now doing cocaine on Wednesday nights and Thursday nights and selling a little cocaine to make ends meet uh, so that you can get a bag for free. And before you know it, you are in way deeper than you ever thought because that drug and certain drugs are designed for you to fucking like them. They were designed for you to like them. So when that happens, that means that they can grab a hold of your fucking balls and not let go. And if you are not mentally strong enough to get out of it, you are going to fuck your life up. That's what young people need to understand in all of this, is that if you are not mentally strong enough, when you go into something that is going to hold on to you, like steroids, because it's enhancing your experience in the gym that you love. You love the gym more than anything on the planet. So it's enhancing that experience. You're at a party. You're going to have an enhanced experience from this. That becomes super dangerous. Nobody is explaining to people that you're going to fucking like these things. That's what makes them dangerous. And whether you're natty or not, like this whole video and basis of it, nobody gives a flying fuck if you're natty or not. All these videos are super popular. However, at the end of the day, what kind of fucking effect is it having on your life personally? It's just entertainment at this point. Like I wanted to have a fun video in the first one and just be, hey, check this guy out. You need to understand that this shit is fucking real. And anybody that thinks that I condone steroids, I don't give a fuck whether you do them or not. I'm not your dad. I'm not your best fucking friend. I'm the motherfucker that's going to tell you exactly how it goes and what's going to occur. Why? Because that's the experiences that I've had in my life. Lots of people told me not to do steroids. In fact, everybody. My parents, all the old heads at the gym, my mentors of training, all of them said, Seth, don't do steroids. I give you all one guess of what I said in my head whenever those people told me to do it. You're right. I said, fuck you. I'm doing them. Because in my head, it was already made up that I was going to. I signed the dotted line saying, I'm in. I knew I was going to be on testosterone for the rest of my life. I knew the health risks involved because I read all the books. And at that point, because I was in that age of 18, 19, 20 years old, I did not give a fuck. I was willing to risk it all for something that I had such passion for and love for. I wanted to be a pro bodybuilder. I wanted to be like Jay Cutler. I wanted to be on the cover of magazines. I wanted to feel the experiences. I wanted to be on stage jack, jam, juicy, fucking nasty. I loved it. So I went after it. And I was willing to risk everything for it. Just like so many other people and other athletes in extreme sports. They're willing to risk it all constantly. And we love watching it. That's why whenever I tell people about this sport, you should support the people that you enjoy following because they are doing things where they are risking everything to put on a show for people, for entertainment purposes, because that's the name of the game. Nobody would give a flying fuck about Nick Walker if he wasn't Nick Walker. If he was not being who he is and taking what he's taking, nobody would fucking care. Nick would probably be some dude at the gym that nobody gave a flying fuck about. That's sad to say, that's kind of relatively ignorant to say, but it's the truth. Same thing with Sam Sulik. Like Sam's fucking 21 years old fucking going all in on this. Is Sam gonna compete one day? I don't know. He might have said in one of his fucking videos that he is. I hope that he does, but he's not gonna get on stage until he's probably 100% ready to do so. 
So am I here to say anything negative about it? No, I don't give a fuck. I hope you do something cool. I hope everybody does something cool. I hope my goal with my videos is to help educate you on these things and help add some value or fun entertainment to your day by watching one of my videos. I'm not here to bash anybody, but am I here to fuck with you, make some jokes, add some flair? abso fucking lootly it's supposed to be fun because we all know that how bad life can suck on certain days. And whenever you do get into a deep, dark hole, sometimes you need some good laughs. Sometimes you need a kick in the ass. Sometimes you need somebody to say, stop being a fucking bitch, get up and work harder. That's all part, and that's all relative to life. So when it comes to, you know, natty or not, I don't care whether you're natural or not. That's why I don't make many of these videos. Any of these, this is the second time I've probably ever talked about it, and that's your fucking fault. These young athletes, fucking keep killing it, dudes. Be honest, be yourselves. Don't hide who you are. Don't be afraid to be yourself uh, because of ridicule, but you just keep on going. Win or lose today, you have to wake up and go to work tomorrow. There's so many cliche things out there about just the journey is everything, and it truly is. Why? Because like it's whenever I coach up my kids with gymnastics. Win or lose today, like Emmy at States, she's fucking three-time state champ. She's the best, she, every, for the past three years, she has been the best gymnast at her level in the state of Pennsylvania. And in order for her to continue to grow and continue to work, I have to make sure she understands that whether you win or lose on this date, you are still going to work tomorrow. If you are state champion, best gymnast in the state of Pennsylvania at level six, are you done after this? No, you still have to wake up and start working for level seven. This year, level seven, if you win level seven states and are the best level seven gymnast in the entire state, are you done? No, you're gonna keep working. It doesn't fucking end. The journey, the process, the work is everything. And if you do lose and you aren't the best, guess what? You're still waking up tomorrow morning and going to fucking work. You just might have a little bit of more fire under your ass because you lost and got your ass kicked. It is part of life. And it goes for all of us in our lives, even if you're not a competitor, even if you're just somewhere working every day where you're, you're, you're challenging yourself within the gym, you're challenging yourself within your work, you're challenging yourself, can you be a better dad? Can you be a better husband? You should be challenging yourself in these things to evaluate, constantly evaluate yourself to see if you can become better. And the whole process is, life is the journey. Can you get better day in and day out? Because every day you wake up, it's a new day to work harder, accomplish new goals, and see what you're actually capable of. I had fun. This was a great video. It's supposed fun. to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be fun. I am probably whacked out on fucking coffee. I just look over and I'm like, yeah, two energy drinks and a fucking double espresso in. We're whacked today. Um, but everybody, thank you for the comments. It's always fun. I hope you understand that this is supposed to be lighthearted and enjoyable. Um, YouTube is fun. It's entertaining. Um, you know, all these people that put themselves out there constantly, like Greg, um, like all these young guys that are constantly putting themselves out there on the internet, continue to do so. Um, and everybody continue to watch, continue to comment, continue to support the people that you enjoy following and supporting because they're the ones that are putting themselves out there working hard and trying to do something extraordinary with life. And the competitors, the guys that are on stage fucking gutting it out, dude, um, continue to do so. Put on the show for everybody. It's fun to watch. I am a massive fan of bodybuilding. I will never not be into being fit. And I love, uh, I love this shit. I love it. And I'll always be as real as possible, even if Aiden sucks at editing or I'm just not that fucking funny. Damn. Uh, we'll figure it out. <laughs> I saw comments where people loved the fucking video. I, they were like, this one. The at first it was like all fucking positive. Man, look at you editing this video and everything. This is awesome. Best natty or not I've ever and seen. And then everybody's like, fuck you. You think Michael Hearn's natural, you pussy. He's not an I'm alien. Like, oh my God. How, again, it's a joke. It's supposed to be fun. Laugh, people. It does not matter what you say. People will interpret things for what they want it to be. So, everybody, I hope you had fun today. I know I did. Expect more. And if you want me to do more of them, fucking hit me in the comments. Fuck you. Have a good day. <laughs>